There are some stories that live with you. And for me, it's what happened to Hala Barakat. An American journalist brutally murdered along with her mother in Istanbul, Turkey. It didn't make sense. The pieces of the puzzle didn't fit. There was blood splattered everywhere. Authorities say that this was a crime of passion, but others believe that the evidence here points to something else. Turkey can be a dangerous place for journalists. The details are out there somewhere. These women matter. They matter. What happened to Hala and her mother, Aruba, would take me and an international team of journalists and investigators on a years-long journey around the globe. Can you please no. describe the knife wounds that you saw? There was really only one person who could tell us exactly what happened that night. I'm going to ask him directly if he killed Hala and Orba. You just say, I did not kill anyone. I first met Hala Barakat almost four years ago when she came bounding into our New York offices full of enthusiasm, a young journalist with a lot of promise. Hala was just 23 years old and she was really just starting her career. Hala was born in Raleigh, North Carolina when her mother Aruba was living with her cousin Suzanne's family. Hala, which means beauty, was always so beautiful ever since she was a little girl. <laughs> If I could describe Hala in one word, one word only, I would say that she was alive. In that she wasn't afraid of her emotions. Hello, Hello viewers, you this is Hala Barakat, reporting from Istanbul. Hala and Aruba moved to Syria and then ultimately settled in Istanbul, Turkey, where Aruba became a very vocal member of the Syrian opposition. We will demonstrate here and we will we stay in camps which was working against the regime in Damascus led by President Bashar al-Assad. It is actually a very harmful regime and they don't really care about our people. Azadi! Azadi! They felt the Assad regime is brutal and there's no justice in Syria as long as he and his family have been in charge. Hala was last heard from, from her colleague when she didn't show up to work, her colleague called her friend. Paula's friend went to check on her, and there was no answer when she knocked on the door of the apartment. So the police came, they had a locksmith who opened the door, and that's when they saw the bodies. There was a shocking video on Al Arabiya, and it just showed an absolutely grisly crime scene. The bodies had been covered in blankets. Detergent had been sprinkled on the blood on the floor. That seemed to be a way to conceal their odor from decomposition, which would give the killer or killers time to get away, days to get away. It was suspect from the beginning. There was no screaming heard by any of the neighbors. I think it shocked the community. The Turkish media took interest, but the international media, it was just kind of a story that quickly passed through. About a week after the killings, there's a break in the case. Turkish police arrested a young Syrian named Ahmed Barakat outside of Istanbul. He was a distant cousin of Hala and Aruba's, and he confesses to the murders. Ahmed had only been living in Turkey for a few months. He'd been, by his own confession, struggling to support himself in, in Damascus after a stint in the Free Syrian Army. Though Aruba barely knew him, she offered him help by giving him some work. There is security camera footage placing Ahmed in Hala and Aruba's neighborhood that night. He's seen on the route to their apartment. The last time he's picked up is, is, a, is a few blocks away. And then on the morning after the murder, around 11 a.m., he can be seen leaving along a similar route in the opposite direction. Ahmed, not have ولا عنده القوة ولا عنده الشجاعة إنه يقتل عروبة وحلا أحمد إله علاقة بالجريمة لكن أحمد ما قتل. What happened to them is so gruesome and horrific and unacceptable. Their lives mattered, and it matters that we know what happened and why it happened and to hold those people accountable. Suzanne Barakat. 
a young physician in the San Francisco Bay Area who was Hala and Aruba's cousin, who took on the mantle not only of being the family's representative, but spearheading an effort to find out what happened to them. At those meetings, they promised that the case of Hala Barakat was a high priority for the Trump administration. And then there was a long period of silence where Suzanne heard nothing from the government. No one following up with the families to see how they can be of support, no outrage from within the American government to say, what the hell are you guys doing? How, how is this permissible? Let's stay on top of it. Let's figure out what happened. And that's when our team got involved with Fariba Nawa and her colleagues at Reveal at the Center for Investigative Reporting. We obtained the Turkish prosecutor's report, yeah. and one of the first things we find is that Ahmed's DNA is found under Aruba's fingernails. That's pretty damning. According to the prosecutor's report, he eventually confesses uh, through a court translator, um, telling investigators that he had killed Aruba in a dispute over money and a kind of crime of passion. Aruba and Ahmed Berkat had an argument. It turned into a physical altercation. Things got violent. Uh, she attacked him with a knife. He defended himself, killed Aruba, and that Hala, uh, you know, witnessing all of this wouldn't stop screaming, and so he killed Hala too. You've got a confession, you've got DNA, you've got camera footage. It's a cut and dry case. But when you look at that crime scene, it raises some obvious questions. There's the detergent. Uh, witnesses say that it was sprinkled wherever there was blood spattered on the floor. That seems like an unusually sober step uh, f for someone to have taken who's in the midst of a crime of passion. There was this question from the beginning. Given how outspoken these women were and how professional the killings seemed to be, was this politically motivated? Was it a hit job? Uh, so a few days after the murders, uh, Aruba's Twitter account was hacked, um, and a picture of Assad and this kind of cryptic message appeared on her account. Greetings from the Golden Condor, Assad, soldiers are everywhere. Was this a clue or just a coincidence? Forensic experts who examined crime scene swabs uh, say that uh, foreign DNA was found under Aruba's fingernail, and that DNA matches Ahmed's profile. Uh, but the autopsy report says that no foreign DNA was found anywhere on Aruba's body. And so there's a, there's a contradiction there, and that's the only piece of physical evidence that actually puts Ahmed inside the apartment. But uh, investigators, um, their first impression was that both women had been killed um, quote-unquote slaughter style by a single cut to the throat. It's Muslim tradition for the family members of the deceased to wash their bodies before burial. And so Shaza, uh, Aruba's sister and Hala's aunt, uh, would have been one of the last people to see them. Um, and so we called her um, in Syria to see what she remembers from that day. Shaza, assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. The Turkish prosecutor in their report said that each victim was stabbed with a knife in the front, very deep stab wounds. Uh, you oversaw Hala and Dr. Ruba being washed for burial and prepared for burial. Can you please describe the knife wounds that you saw? كان الجسم ما فيه طعنات ابدا غير بالرقبه فقط ذبح. The autopsy reports are painting a picture of a kind of a wild crime of passion. Crime of passion. What Shaz is describing sounds more like a sneak attack in a sense. Surprising somebody from behind and cutting their throat. More of a precise professional hit. Absolutely. Hey, uh, my name is Pete Madden. I'm an ABC News reporter. I'm just uh, I'm calling to uh, book travel and accommodations to uh, Istanbul. At this point, there was really only one person who could tell us exactly what happened that night. 11.20 tomorrow night. OK, PM Turkish time. Uh, yeah, let's do that. The convicted killer, Ahmed Barakat. Uh, Ahmed had appealed his conviction. And under Turkish law, um, if your case is under appeal, you can meet with a certified Turkish lawyer. 
So I decided to fly to Turkey uh, to meet up with Fariba and see if we could track Ahmed down. So we're heading to uh, the jail where uh, the convicted killer Ahmed Barakat is being held. ABC hired a lawyer uh, to go in and ask him a couple of questions. And so uh, we're hoping today is going to be uh, going to be a big day. What are some of the, the key questions we're going to ask him? I'm going to ask him directly if he was the one doing it or not. If he killed Hala and Orba Barakat. Good luck. Thanks. Good luck. Thank you. Don't be scared. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.